Welcome to the Pianist TV channel. In this following masterclass, Graham Fitch discusses the technique of double notes, namely thirds and sixths. The filming takes place at Steinway Hall, right in the heart of London. Before Graham begins his lesson, here's a glance around Steinway's impressive showroom and Hall of Fame as well as the all-important workshop. On this introduction, Graham plays the Gig from Bach's French Suite No. 5 on a Model D Concert Grand, the same instrument on which he gives his lesson. Hello, I'm Graham Fitch and I'm bringing you this video demonstration on double notes from Steinway Hall in London. Now, this demonstration complements my article in Pianist Magazine issue 73 on double notes. Now, by double notes, what do I mean by double notes? Traditionally, thirds and sixths. That could be a pair of notes sounded together. One of the hardest things to achieve in piano playing is synchronizing two fingers to sound exactly together, particularly as we're often having to uh, play the, the weaker outer fingers stronger than the stronger inner fingers. These fingers here, one, two, and three, are much more mobile, much more agile than the fourth and the fifth fingers. And yet in double note playing, we have to equalize strength and velocity of all the fingers. And this is what makes it hard to do. We often get very tangled up. One finger seems to trip over the next. So I'm going to give you a series of steps that you can, again, practice to improve the coordination and to, to improve your general level of skill with double notes. Now, let me start off by recommending what presumably would be the Bible of double notes. Uh, I would say it has to be the, the most important single resource, and that's Moskovsky School of Double Notes, Opus 64, which is in three parts. It starts off with fingerings for scales, and then it moves on to exercises, and then you've got specific studies for double notes. Now, I think the best way to start off with double notes is to do exercises in through the keys. Let me just show you what I'm suggesting here. This is a pattern that I like. You can make any pattern you, you find uh, helpful to yourself. I'm going to do first of all major, then minor, then diminished, then dominant to the next key. Can modify that pattern. One thing I think you'll notice that is crucial in playing any type of double notes is to keep the wrist aligned with the fingers that are playing. This would be very tiring if I didn't. Let me show you now an example where I keep locked here. Extremely tiring, really inefficient, and you wouldn't last for more than a couple of bars <laughs> like that. So, let me just show you now how I align the, the wrist and the arm with the hand. I feel that my arm is behind the pair of fingers that's playing. And you see, I can do it very fast because this is constantly uh, mobile and uh, supporting what I'm doing with my fingers. I think the best thing to do next would be to practice some scales in double thirds. Double thirds seem to be the uh, first point. Uh, we, you can do double sixth, but I would suggest doing that later. Now, if we're taking a scale in double thirds, I'm aware that there's a point where I might not be able to join both the notes, but I'm always aiming to join at least one of the notes of the pair. You see that legato there? I have to lift my thumb, but I can join with the other finger. 
So, uh, as so often in, in piano playing, we need to find a good fingering, one that's efficient, and we need to stick with it. Now, the thing with double note playing is that's different from traditional, well, not traditional, but other types of playing, is that fingers have to go over other fingers. Let me give you an example of that from the Berceuse of Chopin. You'll notice that in order to achieve it, I have to have a slightly uh, pointed hand pointing in the direction that I'm going to be traveling. If I kept my hand like this, in a more conventional position, I wouldn't be able to make these adjustments uh, comfortably. Now, how do we practice double notes? I'm going to show you a, a procedure which really will help you a lot. And we start off by thinking of them in separate parts. I can't emphasize how important that is, not to think of it to start with as double notes, but to think of it as separate voices. So in that Chopin example, I would start off by playing probably with my right hand alone, but let me put it together with the other hand. And again, I'm using exactly the fingers that I will be using when I play with both voices. When I practice my lower voice, notice that I'm doing it softer. I'm playing it much lighter and much softer than the strong top finger that I need to project. The next thing I would suggest doing is what I call tapping. Now, I have demonstrated this before in chord playing. It's where I take the lower voice and I play the note twice. And again, I'm trying to preserve the dynamic level that I want in my finished result, which is something very light and rather soft. When I do that the other way round, I'm aiming for something that's longer and more tenuto. Do you hear there? I'm preserving the tonal properties that I'll want in my finished result. The next thing you can do is, instead of playing the, the thirds together, we practice broken chords, broken thirds. Let me show you that. and the other way around. Again, being very careful to stick with the fingering that you're going to use. Let me show you one other way to practice double notes. I'm going to take the sixths, the rather difficult uh, double sixths from Chopin's F major nocturne, the central section. Let me just show you a little bit of that first. Notice there, if I show you the right hand by itself, there's a lot of activity there in, this time in sixths. Now, I don't know if you can see what's happening there. Again, I'm trying to incorporate the finger movements into bigger arm movements. Let me show you that slightly exaggeratedly. And a very good way to further uh, gain independence of the fingers is to practice in a sextuplet subdivision at the top. Let me show you. Now I'll repeat that, this time doing that with the bottom pair of fingers. Do you see how mobile my wrist is. Now, just to finish off this discussion on double notes, it's very important with all of these exercises to listen for quality of sound. So that when I'm playing, let's take this extract from the D flat nocturne again of Chopin, I'm going to want to project a beautiful cantabile top. that 
I'm listening there very carefully to the quality of sound that I'm producing. And again, I want my top voice to be stronger, generally speaking, than my lower voice. I hope these suggestions will help you to improve your playing of double notes. And I look forward to joining you again soon.